Hey, hey guys, what's happening? We're gonna do fractions and symbols of inclusion today. And we've done both of these. We're just gonna ram them together today. So symbols of inclusion, you recognize those like parentheses and brackets and all that kind of junk. So, I mean, you know, there's nothing different about this. We still do the same thing, right? We do symbols of inclusion first, parentheses, then exponents, then multiply and divide, then add, subtract, left to right, boom. There you go. So let's just do it. So we can, let's, Try and do some of this in our heads if we can, if it doesn't get too complicated. It shouldn't, but let's take a look at this together. This part in parentheses is what we need to do first, right? So we could, I would, if I were you, I'd, I'd go like this, three halves and then boom, like that. Okay, let's just figure this out ourselves. The common denominator is 16, of course. One fourth, 16 will be four sixteenths, right? So four sixteenths plus seven sixteenths is 11 sixteenths, right? There we go, minus one eighth. Now what's the next thing we do? Multiply, right? So I don't see anything you can cancel here. So let's just go ahead right across. Three times 11, and then two times 16, minus one eighth. Okay, now let's just do this. What's the common denominator between eight and 32? 32, right? So let's change this into a 32. 32 30 seconds. Oh, you know what I just did? Did I do that right? Okay, anyway, yeah. Okay, one eighth as a 30 second will be four, right? So I have 33 over 32 minus four over 32 is 29 over 32. That's all there is to it. 4.90625, you know, that point's okay. This is good enough right there. That's all there is to it. Let's try another one. Pause and copy this one down. Okay, I'm assuming you've paused. Look at this, a third. Now this is what I would do. I'd go ahead and go 13 fourths. In other words, I'd just go up here, I'd go 13 fourths minus an eighth. Well, let's don't do fourths and eighths. Of course, we want eight as our common denominator, right? So let's go ahead and do 26 eighths. That's the same thing as 13 over four minus an eighth, and then plus one over 48, okay? So 26 eighths minus one eighth is, that's a three, 25 eighths, right? And then plus 148. Order of operations, this is what we do next. So we got 25 over 24 plus one over 48. All right, well 24 and 48, of course the uh, common denominator will be 48 because 24 goes into 48 twice. So 25 over 40, 24 is gonna be the same thing as 50 over 48 plus one over 48 will be 51 over 48. Now if we reduce that, that'll be the same thing as, you know, 1 and 3 48 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 48 16 times, so that's going to be the final answer we get. Okay. All right, let's take a look at this one. Ooh, scary. What looks different? The brackets, right? So we're going to do all that junk inside the brackets first and then we're going to, you know, finish up the problem. So let's let's do a little mental math here. Okay, let's at least save ourselves a little bit of time. If you don't feel like you can do this, that's okay. Don't sweat it. But I'm gonna just go ahead and do it for the, for the sake of our example here. So let's go ahead and get a common denominator of this two thirds and one sixth, which will be of course six, right? So two thirds is the same thing as four sixths, right? Four sixths minus one sixth is three sixths, right? Well, three sixths is the same thing as a half, right? You can, you can go right there, okay. Same thing over here. A third plus five six, let's just make this into six, right? That'll be two six plus five six, that's seven six. And I'll stop right there, okay? You don't have to put you know parentheses in these anymore. They're already all enclosed in the brackets, but just to so you can visualize this, okay? Well, let's do the same thing. Let's find a common denominator. Obviously, it's gonna be six, right? One half is gonna be three over six, right? So we'll have two fifths still on the outside. And our brackets, three six plus seven six is 10 six, right? Let's reduce that. That'll be five over three, right? Two goes into both. Okay, so two fifths times five thirds. Well, that's a piece of cake. You, done. Two over three. There you go, that's all there is to it. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at page 169. Go ahead and pause it and try that practice problem A. Okay, well, you know, I think we can do some of this mental if you want to. 
3 fourths, keep it as 3 fourths, bracket, and then let's take a look at this. Okay, 10 is the common denominator, right? So 4 fifths as a tenth would be 8 tenths, right? Minus half would be 5 tenths, right? So it's going to be 3 tenths. Plus, and of course, 6 will be the common denominator here. 1 6 plus 2 6, right, will be 3 6, right, which is the same thing as 1 half. Okay, that's a half. Now, if you want to go ahead and do this, you know, we'll just do an extra step. This as a, um, a common denominator from 10 and 2 would be 10, of course. So we would have 3 tenths plus 5 tenths, right? Okay. 3 tenths plus 5 tenths is 8 tenths. And we can reduce that to 4 fifths, right? So our real problem becomes 3 fourths times 4 fifths. That chops out and you have 3 over 5. There we go. Okay. Pause it and try the next problem. B. Okay. This is a little bit uh, trickier slightly, but same old thing. A fourth here, and then you let's go ahead and change this together. Two and a half, yuck, nasty. That needs to be five halves. Five halves minus one seventh. We can just move over here if you want to. Five halves minus a seventh. Well, 14 is our common denominator. Something over 14 minus something over 14. We know that's an easy one. That's going to be a two, right? Seven times two. Then two times seven, and then five times seven is 35. 35 minus two is 33. So that'll be 33 over 14 plus 128. Now, order of operations, you tell me what happens next. The multiplication, right? Okay. So that, that's where we're going we're gonna to go. 1 times 33, 33. 4 times 14, you're going to have to make sure you, you know, do this correctly. That's 56 plus 128. Now you might look at this and go, what? Come on, oh no. A lot of times what Saxon does is make these denominators so they're one of them is just a multiple of the other one. And you can probably tell that 28, uh, excuse me, yeah, or 56 is a multiple of 28. It's just 28 times 2. So all you need to do to make this into a 56 is just multiply it by 2. So multiply by 2, then multiply that by 2. So look at here. 33 over 56 plus 2 over 56 is 35 over 56. Now don't you leave that like that. How does that reduce? You tell me. You better know your times tables. I mean, 7 goes into both of those. Make sure you know that. 7 and then 35 is 5. 7 and then 56 is 8. 5 eighths is the final answer. Okay. I know these are kind of tedious. They're limited in your in your book. There's not like 8 of them in one you know, problem set. That'd be like, you know, death. But um, you can do these. Just do one or two. What you want to do is train your brain just to be thinking of that order of operations and then messing with fractions. Look. This, this algebra one half is the last year in which you are going to be messing a lot with fractions and decimals as far as, you know, making sure you have them down. Because when, they, when you do algebra one, it's basically we assume you know how to do fractions and decimals and we're going to change it to apply it to A's, B's and X's and Y's and all that stuff. So make sure you get these down. Okay, y'all have a great day. See you next time.